Today I want to talk about LARP weapons and where do you start? So you found a LARP that you want to go to in your local area. Fantastic. Now before going, I would always recommend asking that LARP if they have the ability to give you a loaner weapon and see what that is. It's a great opportunity to try a weapon before you have to purchase one. Also. Many LARPs have players which they might be willing to lend you a weapon. I know myself, I lend out lots of weapons, but the issue with this is sometimes negative things happen, such as weapons breaking. So it's always good to discuss with that person in the case that that would happen. So now that you've gone to the LARP and you've tried a couple of weapons and you know what you want, it's time to make sure the weapon you think you want fits within the rules. So make sure you read up on your LARP's rules and that you'll be buying the right weapon to work. There's nothing sadder than going to your LARP's equipment desk or the team that manages what weapons can be on field and they say, hey, this sword you can't use. It's, it's the worst, it's the worst thing. So you're on Epic Armoury site, but where do you start? At the moment, Epic Armoury has three different types of weapons that they supply. Their first one is their classic style. Now their classic style of weapon is the fiberglass rod which is the staple of the weapon which goes through the center. Then you've got foam on either side and then that is covered in a thick latex paint and that includes the handle as well. With these weapons, because of it being foam, the handles are normally covered in a leather or another type of material. It's not actually part of the sword, it's normally glued to it. The positives of these weapons is that they're cheap, they're reliable and they're pretty durable. Now this applies to their staffs and their spears as well that Epic Armoury creates in this classic style. This is one of my Epic Armoury swords. As you can see, I haven't maintained it too well, which leads me into the negative of Epic Armoury classic styles, which is they require a high level of maintenance because of the latex paint. What you need to apply to them is a silicon spray before, after and in storage to keep that latex uh, flexible and, and doesn't crack. But I'll be showing on a later video how you can restore this back to a nice finished latex coat. So the second range in Epic Armoury is their moulded range or known as the stronghold range within Epic Armoury. Now the difference between the classic and the moulded is it's moulded, which means that you've got that fiberglass rod within a mould which is then injector filled with a polyurethane foam. I'm not exactly sure how they work, but the finished product comes out a lot harder and it requires a lot less maintenance because it's actually no longer painted with latex paint, it's just painted. So that leads me to the positives. Number one is a lot less maintenance, number two a greater achievement of detail is be it, uh, such as uh, the hilt and the handle they look a lot prettier in my opinion and number three is I believe they're more durable than their classic style just because of the construction methods however there are negatives to this first is they're more expensive because they're more expensive to make second is they do weigh a bit more which is a bit of a positive because they feel a bit nicer in the hand but the negative comes when actually fighting with the swords. If you don't have the most control over it because you're new and you're just learning, you can hit a little bit hard with them, which of course is never a positive. We don't actually want to get hurt at LARP, we just want to have a little bit of a buff. The third range is the hybrid range, which is adding that molded handle to the classic blade. Now this has the positives and negatives of both, as in the handle feels fantastic and it's got a nice weight to it, but the blade doesn't hit too hard because it's of the classic variety and quite soft. Now, this comes with the negative of the maintenance on the blade, but it also comes with the positive of it hits a little bit less hard. Also, it comes with the positive that they're generally cheaper than the Stronghold range, and a longer length is achievable with Epic Armoury's range. 
Another brand of sword that I don't know too much about is uh, Mithlon, which I will leave a link in the description below. Now I've got plenty of friends that have their products and that are quite happy with them. I believe they're a bit like Epic Armory where they've got a bit of a mix of weapons and I have been able to see them on the field and they're quite durable. I also know Mithlon makes some fantastic kit and armor, so feel free to check their website out. <laughs> So this now leads me to the Cali Maisel range. Now the range of Cali Maisel is very similar to the Stronghold range, however I believe Cali Maisel is the first to do it, which is that it is an injected moulded blade, which means that you've got the fibreglass rod already in and then they filled it with a polyurethane uh, foam mould. Now I know for example they keep that recipe under lock and key, so I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I've owned quite a lot of Kelly Maisel products and I'm quite chuffed with them. The benefit of Kelly Maisel, like the Stronghold range, is they're very durable and they don't need any maintenance. Uh, I don't maintain any of my weapons very well and that's why I normally buy Kelly Maisel. They also have a great realistic look to them and able to achieve more detail because of the construction method. The negatives to Kelly Maisel is that they are expensive. They are probably up there with the expensive lark weapons. Also, Kelly Maisel is notorious for hitting hard if you have a lack of control, something that I do uh, sometimes run into by accident because I forget that there's such a weight in the weapon. This comes very true when you're talking about axes and maces from Kelly Maisel due to there's so much weight in this top end and using the acceleration. So that's something really to think about if you're thinking of buying an axe or a mace, I definitely recommend trying one out first before buying one because they are a totally different beast to use compared to a sword. Spears and axes, uh, spears and uh, pole axes can be quite similar there too. Something to check out with your LARP as well, what they allow. This brings me to the last of my knowledge base on LARP weapons, which is Nemesis. Now, Nemesis, I don't own a Nemesis weapon, but I've got friends that do, and I borrow them quite often. Now, Nemesis is kind of an in-between of Cali Maisel and Epic Armory, as in they do some fantastic products with EVA foam on the, on the fiberglass rod mold. However, they're able to achieve fantastic detail and superb quality, but you will be paying for it. They are the Rolls Royce of LARP weapons. If you can think of it and it's practical to make, they can make it for you. Definitely recommend checking out their weapons below. They make some fantastic things and through my friends and my own use of the weapons, they do have fantastic durability. The negative being they do require the maintenance of that silicon spray on the latex. So when you're looking at weapons and you've read a bit up about the rules, there's a couple of things to know about LARP weapons and how they're constructed. For example, this Epic Armoury sword, which I have here, has a fiberglass rod that runs from the handle all the way throughout the blade. Now then that is co coated on the sides with foam, glued together, and then it's all painted with a latex paint, giving it this effect. Now, if you look at the prices of the websites I spoke about and you go, look, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to love LARPing, I don't want to put down $120 onto a sword, that's fine. What I would recommend doing is joining your local LARP buy and sell pages and other groups and medieval groups where people like myself have decided, hey, this weapon no longer fits what I kind of want to do or I don't enjoy playing with it anymore, so I'm actually going to sell it. They normally are sold at quite a discount. So for example, this Epic Armoury sword I bought, I actually bought for $20, and it's probably an $80 sword. Of course it needed some maintenance, and it needs maintenance once again, um, but I still think it's a good price to pay. One thing when buying a secondhand sword is you need to check that fiberglass rod hasn't been broken. One thing that happens quite often is that fiberglass rod in the tip here, it actually snaps that compromises the whole structural integrity of the weapon because if you were to stab with this sword, the possibility of the fiberglass rod coming through the foam and actually impaling the person you're fighting for real is a possibility, which no one wants to happen at last. 
So what I would do is go through the rod and feel that its structure is perfectly fine. After you've done that, check out the blade. Now, some blades can have quite large gashes in them, and depending on your LARP's rules and regulations, they can be fixed. For example, in my LARP, I know they can be glued back together. But it's always good to have a comment on your LARP's page or see what other people are doing before you buy it in case it does compromise the structural integrity of the sword and safety. The third thing, of course, is how it looks. Now, with Epic Armoury weapons, when they are not maintained well, they start to look like this and they just keep getting worse. However, if they're cheap and you don't mind putting in a little bit of work, you can work with this. You just need to buy yourself some latex paint. What you do is take it back and repaint it and it will look as good as a new sword. I'll be doing that in an upcoming video. Another thing, of course, depending on your LARP's rules, is the ability to stab with a sword and what swords are stab safe and not. For example, with this Kali Maisel sword, in the end here, I know this is a stab approved sword because I can feel that it has the adaption on the end here to make sure that that fiberglass rod won't be coming out and stabbing them. So I can feel that there's a Kevlar tip on it and then it has a little bit of an adaption on the end there as well to just ensure that if it was to happen, it would come up. Great type of weapon for stabbing and something that you should check with with your LARP because not all weapons are capable of the same. Especially with some of the Epic Armoury spears, they're a bit funny. Sometimes you can't actually stab with them because that fiberglass rod is too close to the tip and it's more of a slashing weapon than a stabbing. With LARPs, depending on the rules, there's many different types of weapons you can have from spears, swords, axes and maces and then you get to your ranged weapons. Now you can have uh, bows and arrows which are adapted to LARP and if your LARP allows it, you can also have band guns which are loaded with a rubber band which is uh, medical tubing which then is fired at the end. Now these weapons are a little bit more difficult to pry with because they add a different safety implication. The ability to hit someone in the eye or a softer spot is quite higher because of the accuracy that they pose. So that's something to consider maybe when asking someone to borrow their weapon or if there's any that's available to borrow. In conclusion of this video, what I'd recommend before buying your own weapon is seeing if the LARP has the ability to lend you a weapon or seeing anyone at the LARP will because I do it quite often. So don't hesitate in asking. However, it might be worthy just discussing what was happened if something negative happened like a break or anything down that corridor. Also, you need to make sure you check the rules of your LARP before you buy a weapon. There is nothing sadder than buying a weapon, going to your LARP's equipment desk and then telling you that this weapon you can't play with on the field because it doesn't sit, fit a certain criteria. I would also be only buying off reputable sites just for the case of the maintenance in regards to if there's something wrong or the warranties. I've never had a problem with buying off Epic Armoury or Kelly Maisel or a, for example, we've got a shop here in my local town which sell both products and they are fantastic with the warranties as well. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found some useful tips out of it. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe for my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and have a good day.